How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you through my very own free draft for the upcoming Blank Game Week 29. So I just want to put this out there first of all, no I'm not on the actual free chip but don't worry, I'm going to still create this draft like I was, as I think it's a very popular strategy going into Blank Game Week 29. I also just want to say this draft is more of a template. I think most people's drafts on the free at for Blank Gaming 29 are pretty similar. And that's because there's only four fixtures to come up. Now what you guys can then do is add your own flavor, your own spice to it. Some differentials here and there depending on your risk strategy. So I'll be giving you guys the basic in terms of the template. So in this video I'll be going over the draft like I always do. First of all taking a look at the fixtures, deciding which teams to target. And also give you guys some insights into whether you should activate the chip or not. Then we'll head straight into all that goodness in terms of the free draft with tons of money in the bank. So I'd probably suggest waiting till Saturday as there's no reason to kind of rush those transfers. So that's something you guys are interested in. Sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So first things first, the fixtures as I always say are the bread and butter for any draft. And for Game Week 29's blank, there's only four. So yes, that's right. Probably one of the biggest blanks I've seen in my FPL playing career. And that's why a lot of people have to use the free it. So let's go over these fixtures. The first one, Burnley versus Brentford. This one's quite easy to call for me. I think Brentford definitely the team to favor. However, I don't exactly know if I'm expecting a clean sheet from them. So Burnley's attack has improved slightly as we saw in the weekend against West Ham, but I'd probably say that Brentford have the biggest chance of a clean sheet. The next up, Luton versus Nottingham Forest. This is also quite tough to call. I think this could go either way. I'm probably expecting goals from both sides and therefore the defenses might not be ones to look at. Then the final fixture on Saturday is going to be Fulham versus Spurs, the one that you definitely want to target from a Spurs point of view, especially their attackers as they're on red hot form. So what I will say is I think most people are going for one defender and two attackers from Spurs, but a differential approach might be to go for three attackers. Then finally West Ham versus Aston Villa, you probably have to give it to Aston Villa's side of things. Even after they lost to Spurs, I expect them to rebound, but I do expect goals from both sides. So as you probably would have noticed, as I've gone through the fixtures, not kind of predicting many clean sheets to be honest, and therefore definitely favor the attackers from the more important sides. Now I think a useful thing to do is actually do predictions on what you think will happen in each of these games. Because there's only four fixtures, it won't take that much time. And then depending on those fixtures, you guys can pick your free at drafts. Now another important question I want to go over is should you guys actually free it in blank game week 29? Like myself, I've got nine players with a minus four, I can get 11 players. And that's why I'm keeping on the free at chip. So a very big discussion has been taking place over on Twitter. It seems like a war in the comments and everything, non free versus versus free But I definitely think the majority strategy is to use the free chip in Game Week 29. But I guess, should you, is there kind of a nice little criteria to activate the chip? What I probably would say is that if you guys can get maybe a minus eight for a full starting 11, then I might save the chip. Anything less than that, or even for a minus eight, I think the free chip is perfectly adequate. And there's gonna be some upside even though there's only four games. The way you can think of it is that you're going to save yourself those hits and also give yourself a full starting 11. So whatever plays you have versus starting 11, that's going to be purely made up on points on the activation. So once again, I think for a minus 8 for a full starting 11, I think that you guys can get away with it. But anything more than that, I probably would activate the chip and join the majority chip strategy. But what you guys can do is that if you are unsure, comment it down below and I'll try to help you guys out as far as possible to decide whether to use the chip or not. But now let's go on to the all important free draft. I'm going to kind of go through this quite quickly. As I said, this is definitely a template. You've probably seen this team before. It might have been actually when you made your own drafts. So the first thing I want to point out is the money in the bank 11.4. So yes, you guys can wait till Saturday to activate the chip as that money is going nowhere to be honest. There might be some kind of freak event that cancels all Premier League games. Who kind of knows? And that's why it might be safer to wait till Saturday to do it. I'm going to start off on the bench because the bench this week kind of picks itself. Once you have your starting 11, you simply go for players that you haven't picked or teams you haven't tripled up on. So that's why I've gone for Martinez and Bailey. These two options I don't think fit into my starting 11 at the current moment. Both are still great assets. Now you guys might actually prefer the Aston Villa side of things. Maybe you think that West Ham won't score. You can always start Martinez. Or if you think Bailey will do well, he could be in your midfield department. I don't really think the other two though from Nottingham Forest, Murillo and Toffolo, these two assets, I'm not really expecting a clean sheet to be honest. They just simply are because I didn't triple up on Nottingham Forest. So I'm not saying that your bench isn't important, but I guess in a single game week, most of your options in your starting 11 should play. But I guess you can rely on Bailey or Murillo if they have to come off the bench. So our goalkeeper is going to be the ever kind of popular Flecken from Brentford. The reason for that, I think that kind of against Burnley, the highest chance of a clean sheet. And that's why I've actually doubled up on their defense. 
So Flecken and Regulon are my two kind of Brentford defenders at the moment. Regulon offers that attacking threat, however he currently is carrying a knock. So maybe just wait for that press conference coming up on Thursday or Friday, but if he is back, I would suggest going for him, as he is quite attacking. So these two assets are probably kind of mainstays in your free drafts, definitely kind of the best defensive matchup, and Brentford could always keep a clean sheet. Then on the left-hand side, I'm going to go for Pedro Porro. I'm going to go for the conservative kind of Spurs approach, one defender, two attackers. But between Pedro Porro and Adogi, that's up in the air. Actually, that Adogi might be slightly more attacking in terms of open play, but because Porro's on some set pieces, they are quite even. So once again, another 50-50 on the fret that you guys can go for either side. Hopefully, there's not too much in it. Now, do I think that Spurs keep a clinch against Fulham? I don't exactly know. Is an away game. Fulham have been quite free-scoring, but there's always a chance. Same could be said with Doherty, offers that attacking third, which is pretty nice. Against Nottingham Forest at home, let's see how they're performing against Bournemouth tomorrow night. But at the moment, my third favourite defender. Now, will Luton keep a clean sheet? Probably not, but as with most teams in blank game week 29, at least he does offer that attacking threat though, which you might have to rely on. You guys will probably notice my strategy for the defence department, going for those fullbacks. When there's no clean sheets, at least you can have some attacking threat. So I'm going to start off our midfielder review in the middle with Gibbs White from Nottingham Forest. Now he has the reverse fixture of Doherty going head to head, but Luton away isn't too shabby. Now between Bailey and Gibbs White is probably the debate you guys want to look at, but I do prefer the Nottingham Forest man, as he is currently on penalties. So I think a little bit of a nice differential on a Fiat that you guys can go for, as his ownership is pretty low at the moment. Then a more kind of popular option, Jared Bowen has Aston Villa at home, don't you know how to call this game? West Ham were quite disappointing against Burnley in game week 28, but Aston Villa have also been shipping a few goals. So just hope at home against the stronger side, maybe Bowen gets more counter-attacking. Aston Villa do play that famous high line. Now with the last two spots, I'm going to be completing our Spurs triple up with Madison as well as Human Son. And as you also know, Son has the Campsy armband as I think he'll be the most popular option. So there's a little bit of debate in terms of Campsy this week. There are some other options, but I do prefer Son with that extra point per goal. Now with Madison and Son against Fulham, I'm expecting a few goals here. I suppose attacking third has been pretty decent at the moment. So these two kind of pick themselves. I'm even bringing Madison in with a free transfer. So definitely one to get. Now for department, we're going to bring in Ivan Tony against Burnley to complete our Brentford triple up. With that fixture, I'll suggest the same. There might be a little bit of a decision between kind of going for Visa or Ivan Tony. Visa has the better form, but Tony is the more reliable option. Is on penalties as well, which I think edges that in his favor. But both assets I think should do well in 29. Then the ever-reliable Ollie Watkins, even though he didn't score against Spurs on the weekend, I believe that he's a great asset against West Ham. And I'll tell you, as an Ariola owner, West Ham's defense isn't too great. So kind of a no-brainer, probably one of the only players you guys are carrying over into Game Week 29, as most of us have owned him throughout the season. Now the last option is where you guys could go slightly differential. I've seen the Fulham option, Munez is quite a popular asset, but I've gone for Morris from Luton. So it might be a little bit of a bias here, as I do still have him in my current team, but I do like this fixture more than the Spurs one. But as I said, you guys can go differential here. Don't think there'll be too much in it. But currently favor Morris as more of a template pick. So as you guys can see, the starting 11 is based on a few teams. Brentford, Spurs, Luton. Then we kind of have some other teams sprinkled in here. And Gibbs White is probably your main differential. You're probably hoping that Brentford keep a clean sheet and maybe there's a few goals in the forward department. But other than that, the free kind of picks itself. What you guys can now do is comment down below. You can roast my free if you want to, but I think this is a pretty template. So why not comment which differentials you guys would rather go for? As always, if you guys have any transfer dilemmas or free dilemmas, comment them down below or on my Discord server, link in the description. But this is basically going to wrap up the video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like it and subscribe if you have subscribed yet. And I will see you guys from my team selection, where as mentioned, I'm not on the free it, so minus four hit is probably going to be taken. But for the time being, I'm Isai Ovs, I'm Davey FPL, and I'm out. Cheers, bye.